bring literacy to life. Come on. Hi everybody, welcome to Bring Literacy to Life with Technology. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Ashley Prem, and I am a Digital Integration Facilitator in Moore County Schools, North Carolina. The session today is about bringing integrated ideas and technology to your literacy lessons using free resources. Well, mostly free resources. The reason I chose this session was because I wanted to bring literacy to life using technology, engaging my students, differentiating my instruction while giving them choice and ownership without fear of losing the content or standards. The engineering process that we use in Moore County Schools looks like this. Ask, imagine, plan, draw it out, create, and improve. We'll talk more about this process in this presentation. Today's session goals are to share about Seesaw, Flipgrid, green screen apps, Chromebook, read aloud features, and websites and apps. Let's start with Seesaw. Seesaw is a digital portfolio for your students. It's free and easy to use. One of the best features I love about Seesaw is that it allows parents, guardians, and all their family members to see the students' work. So my son's grandparents in Michigan can join us and see all of the great things he's doing in class. Seesaw is easy to use and easy to create and organize your lessons. You can also schedule your lessons. I've attached a link here for the 20 Seesaw Ideas with Chromebooks from Ditch That Textbook. My first grade teacher explains it way better than I could. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is it's my class um, and I've got activities already scheduled right now that the students are doing. And so I've scheduled, um, these are activities that I already have scheduled for next week. But if I wanted to schedule activities for next week, I go to my activity library, my library. I do have folders set up down here. I have recurring activities, literacy and math. And the recurring activities folder are just things that I typically assign every week. Like I assign rainbow words on Wednesday because this is a day, of course, that I have planning here at school. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign this for next week. Um, let me just go ahead. I'm gonna assign it to all my students. I typically put this in the literacy folder. Um, so I'm just gonna check that and I'm gonna schedule it right here so that the kids don't do this right away. So assign it on a specific day. I'm gonna put this on next Wednesday. I like to open things up at 8 a.m. So I'm gonna put this at 8 a.m. And just push assign. And then when I go back to my class, I can go to my scheduled assignments. I do already have a few things scheduled. Um, down here, it'll say scheduled for October 21st at 8 a.m. Isn't that amazing? You can schedule things so quickly and easily. So Seesaw also has a subject-based search community that I'll show you in just a minute. But I wanted to show you this amazing document that Sarah Malchel created. I'm using it here with permission from her. And it's linked in my slides as well. So you can click on any of those and it'll take you directly to lessons for that subject area. This is what the community looks like. So you saw in the video, Miss Curry went right to her community and I could search any subject, any grade level, any standard, and it would pull up lessons all these teachers have created for them. I can also save it to my library. And from my library, I can assign any lessons that I choose. 
I've linked a few things in this presentation for you. There's a quick start guide for teachers. There's more information on a, one of our diff created wakelet with Seesaw resources for you. And then at the very bottom, there's the link for the free sign up. You can just go to seesaw.com as well. So how to log on. It's very easy and can be used on any platform. This link, this page will actually link you to the student support resource pages that Moore County Schools has created for Seesaw and for our parents. My very, very favorite thing about Seesaw is that students can upload pictures, drawings, and videos. Most of my K2 friends just use the top three, but some of the older students can upload pictures and links. So it's very student friendly. Let me share. So, so I'll tell you how I did. So I, I made a photo of this. And then I recorded, I recorded it, I recorded it. What'd you record? What'd you say? Um, well, it goes, by the way, it goes home to, so your parents can see, so, 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 hi, mom, today, I'm going to tell you one of these food chains on my worksheet. And I kind of told her about it. And then you check? Like, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then you push the check and then... So it's very student friendly to use. If kindergartners and first graders can figure it out, I as a teacher could try. So the text features... Students actually took a picture and then they put in these little heading, photograph, illustration, and moved these text features over, which I thought was a really great idea. So they just inserted text. Another amazing thing about Seesaw is that I can add voice to my pictures or to my lessons. So as a teacher, I could add my voice recording to a lesson and tell the students the directions. I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. But these are fluency checks that Miss Curry uses with her first graders. So if you click on it, she can hear exactly Ben reading or exactly the student reading his story about Ben. If you click on this one, she can hear the sight words for Letterland that her students were working on. Students did this underlining, so they were underlining different parts of the text, and they can underline, they can circle, they can do all kinds of dictation on their on their keyboards or on their iPads, whatever device they're using at home, and they can also record their voice, which is really great for the younger students. Here's some more examples. So at the very, very bottom, she had each student record. So this would have been Sarah's paper, and Sarah recorded each word and put it down at the bottom there. So she's got all these words that she said out loud. This was for the S blend. And then here's some more for the S blend, and she just said her, all the words. And here's the directions that Miss Curry put on her rainbow words. So you could play it, and she told the students these exact directions. She just did them as an audio version for them. The last feature that I love in Seesaw is the skills-based assessment part. So I can attach any standard I want or any skill that I want to an assignment, which is super amazing. So you can see some of the ones that Ms. Curry has in her class. This is how you would attach the assignment. So when you go into the activity, you can edit the activity and you can Schedule it like she showed you, or at the very, very bottom with that yellow circle down there, you can edit the activity, and you can edit it so that it will, it will add your skills that you want to it. 
So you can add teacher notes. I could assign it immediately. I can put it in a folder. I can do whatever I need to in the edit mode on it. And I can add skills right there in the edit mode as well. So some of the choice standards and skills for the assignments, this is just an idea of what they offer. And you just click it and toggle it and add it to whatever lesson you are working on. All right, next up is Flipgrid. I've attached the educator's guide to Flipgrid in my slides for you. Flipgrid is a learning platform that allows students to create a video response. And what students don't like to talk on a video? It's very user friendly. One of the great things that I love about Flipgrid is that when I finished doing the response video, I can actually pull the QR codes, which is great because I can attach these QR codes and print them out to their documents and hang them in the hallway so that other teachers can walk by and see the students. Let's take a look at this example about context clues. Hello, my name is Sophia, and the word I was trying to figure out was obstacles. The strategy I used was synonym, and the synonym was barriers. The clue that I used was bridges and tunnels help people overcome such barriers. And the possible meaning would be things that slow or stop movement. Didn't she do a fabulous job? So I do work collaboratively with the teachers and also with our academic coach. We go into classrooms, and here's another lesson that we've done together, the nonfiction text feature lesson. It's one of my favorites. I've attached the slides in case you would like to do this lesson with your class as well, at the very bottom. So the students are given a blank sheet and a whole stack of magazines. After we do the lesson, they need to go and find their very own text feature and talk about it on their paper anyways. This is the planning document when we go back to that engineering design process. Once the students have their final copy of exactly what they would like, they can practice in their Flipgrid. They go ahead and type in the Flipgrid code for that lesson and they're able to go ahead and talk about it. Let's look at a few examples. Hello, my name is Marian. My class been learning about text features. My text feature is a caption. A caption is a sentence that tells about a picture. Here's an example by... Hello, my feature is a title. A title tells you all about what's about the book. Here's a picture that I cut out of a magazine. Didn't they do an amazing job? So one of the things that I like to do in the classroom is to go ahead and talk about the text feature and the purpose. There's our poster that we created together. The last one I wanted to share with you was Jackson's. Now, Jackson's one of those students that doesn't like to talk a lot. He's very quiet in class. But once we gave him the screen, he had a lot to say about his flip grid. His teacher's outside with him. Let's take a look. Hello, my name is Jackson. Um, my paper is about label. A label is a word that tells about a picture. Okay, maybe it wasn't a lot to say about it, but he did share his response with us. The last thing that I'm going to share about Flipgrid is how to organize it. So these are different groups that I actually have. My schools, we're going to take a look at that second one to the bottom called literacy. And these are the different topics that I have under the literacy group. So lots of nonfiction you can see. That's one of my favorite lessons. Another one of my favorite lessons was a narrative writing that the students did, animal exploration writing. You can see that imaginative writing one there. Uh, the third one from the bottom is an animal exploration one that we did. And it was all about penguins. 
this is just some of the ones that we have. And so the students were able to go ahead and research and do all kinds of information, find all kinds of information about their different penguin that they were given. And the, it was Arctic animals, so not all of them chose penguins, but the, that was one of the topics. And then the QR codes were actually placed after they did their Flipgrid and they did their video response about it. They each shared a little piece of it. Their QR codes were actually attached to the bottom of those, those ones out in the hallway, those different posters that they created out in the hallway. So when we're bringing literacy to life, we're actually bringing it to life, putting it out in the hallway and letting other people see what we're doing. So just like I shared before with the Seesaw, Moore County Schools has put together a very student-friendly support page. I've linked it here for you if you would like to use it as well. So in some ways that I've used Flipgrid in the classroom, you saw the text features, the context clues, the book cafe videos you'll see in a few minutes, the nonfiction animal exploration videos, and then for book it reports or summaries. I like it for summaries as well. The students can go into that Flipgrid and tell me what they think of a book. Tell me why they should give that book to a friend. I'm sure you can think of a lot of other ways to use Flipgrid. It works for math, science, social studies, all right, next up is some green screen fun. <laughs> the app that I like the best is called Do Ink. I'm going to show you how user-friendly it is. So this student says her name, and she says where she's going, and it's 81 degrees. Hello, my name is Aiden. I'm at Disney World. It is 81 degrees. Go so I had a kindergarten teacher that wanted to do a weather unit. She wanted to make it come to life. So we went ahead and read the story, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. She's an amazing kindergarten teacher, by the way. <laughs> so her unit was that she chose a place she wanted the students to visit. She assigned them homework for the week, and the parents had to help look up the weather in that place that the students had chosen. They needed to send in props for that weather. So if it was rainy, cold, sunny. My name is Elle and I am in Hawaii. It is 79 degrees. <laughs> All right, so what do you need? You need a green screen app. There's a lot out there. But my favorite one is this Do Ink one. For $4.99, it's kind of pricey. I'll show you a few free examples on the next few slides. If you have an iPhone or a MacBook, you can use a program called iMovie as well. And for a green screen, you don't need anything fancy. This green tablecloth works just fine. $7 on Amazon. Another app that I really like that's free is called StickBot Studio app. You don't need to buy the StickBots or the other creations that you see in this short little video. It will work just fine without any extra props. I also used a pizza box with some green screen construction paper in these videos. All right, so these are virtual reality apps. We're not gonna get too much into that, but you can do some amazing things. If you're familiar with the old Erasma app, you can do some awesome things with the augmented reality as well. I often explain to my students that virtual reality is when I'm in that space, but I'm taken to a completely different space with glasses or virtually somewhere else. Augmented reality is when I stay in my space and something else otherworldly comes in. So let's go back to the weather. The kindergarten teacher had a green screen placed on her the back of her classroom door. It was nothing special. It was just a piece of green fabric that she put on the classroom door. You could also use a bulletin board. This teacher, because she's so amazing, also brought in some umbrellas, some rain hats, and some sunglasses that she had as well. This teacher also had a parent volunteer to film the students. That may not be an option anymore, but it doesn't take but just a few minutes to film them. Here's another example. My 
name is Kose, and I'm reporting on Okinawa, Japan, and it's getting 68 degrees, and I used to be there. All right, so do ink. Here's the reason I like do ink the best. This little girl is actually on the green screen do ink tutorial videos, and she explains it so well. Hi, you know what a green screen effect is, right? It's used in the movies to make it look like the actress has landed on an alien planet. And it's used in TV to make it look like your local news guy standing in front of a weather map. With green screen by Dubik, it's easy to make your own green screen videos. The app works by combining images from multiple sources into a single video. These images can come from a live video camera or from pre-recorded videos and pictures on your camera roll. This demo uses pre-recorded videos and pictures, but it's easy to set up your own green screen backdrop and use a live video camera too. You don't need a fancy setup to get good results. And here's how you do it. Choose a video or photo for the background. Then add the camera. Anything that's screen in the camera image gets erased, so you can see whatever's in the background. If you want, you can change the transparent color to create lots of cool effects. And if you're wondering how we made the animations you're seeing, they are made using our upper app, doing animation and drawing. You should check it out if you haven't already. Wow! When this demo ends, scroll around the timeline to see how it's put together. Tap the help button to get more detailed information. And have fun making your own green screen videos. Alright, so you can see super easy. That's one reason I like this the best. Now, the bottom, at the very, very bottom, my one of my media coordinators came up with this great, great thing, and it says mid-vid bottom background. And and that's the best way for the students to remember that the middle is where their video goes, the bottom is where their background goes. So my third graders did a great fable, and they had to research a fable, talk about a fable, and then um, add some characters into their fable. These were just pictures that they found, and then what I did was I put them all together. I took all their do ink videos and put them all together in this video here in the middle. I'm not going to play it because it is a bit long. They share their fables, and those background pictures were all done with Do Ink. All right, next up is Book Cafe. If you've never done a Book Cafe, I encourage you to go ahead and try it. So this was my second grade. They did Dr. Seuss, weather. They talked about autumn and Thanksgiving. Here's some of their weather books that they chose. And then the Dr. Seuss was actually a very fun day. They, they did the book cafe for a few days. Uh, and so the, this was the day of Dr. Seuss. So they had different tables of Dr. Seuss stories. And these pictures were actually provided by my amazing teacher, Mrs. Day. And her kindergarten students enjoyed their book cafe that day. All right. Chromebook read aloud. In case you didn't know, well, if you use Chromebooks, here in Morcani schools, we use Chromebooks. So if your schools also use Chromebooks, I want to show you a very quick, easy feature where you can turn on a read aloud feature for them. I'm going to click here because one of the digital integration facilitators here in Moore County School tells it way better than I could. Hey everyone, I'm going to show you all how to enable the read aloud feature that's built into the Chromebooks. It's a pretty handy feature. The students can, once it's enabled, the students can highlight text. Then they'll just press and hold the search and the S key for a second. When they let go of those keys, the Chromebook will read aloud whatever they've highlighted. So to enable this, first you'll go to settings. And the easiest way to do that I've found is click on the clock, and click on the little gear for settings. From here, we're going to scroll. Once it loads up, we're going to scroll down to the bottom. Click Advanced. We scroll down to the bottom once again and Manage Accessibility Features. 
Okay, so for the read aloud, or it's called select to speak, we're going to click this little slider right here. And now that's enabled. And it gives you the instructions right here. Highlight what you want to hear, then press search plus S. Now, alternately, you can press and hold search, then click and drag to select content. But it's been, in my experience, it's a little finicky with this method where you press and hold search and then click and drag. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, if you highlight what you want to hear and then do this one, it, it works a little better. So let's give this a little test run so you can see how it works. I've got a Canvas quiz pulled up. And so again, what you would do is you would highlight what you want it to read aloud. Press and hold search and S for just a second. And you let Solve go. Solve for X. One plus one equals X. There it is. And let's see if it'll read our answer choices. Two, zero, zero, one. One, three, three. All right, so there's that. Again, anything you can highlight, it will read it aloud. You want to make sure that you highlight the entire word, or it will not read the entire word aloud. Home, assignments, Good. discussion. Will Allred is the digital integration facilitator here in Moore County Schools at Pinecrest High School. So thanks, Will, for sharing that. Very easy to do. Last up are the reading websites. Free websites for grammar, reading, literacy, and you can add your favorite as well. Teacher One Stop Shop has great resources for you. There's keyboarding games, authors, poetry, and many subject-based resources, not just for reading or writing. Another great website is the Holden Mifflin Journeys website. I've attached the link here as well for you. So they have grade level based assignments and lessons and stories. And the stories are read aloud stories, which is really great. And then this, the Michigan Wayne Resale program has actually some STEM books on their website, which offer some great, great integrated STEM challenges with lessons and all kinds of information for you. So those are two of my favorite. Another way to bring literacy to life is with QR codes. I attached a QR code generator link there as well. So you could read a story and then you can share it with a QR code or you can share out research-based activities for them to walk around the room and snap pictures. That way it gets them out of their seat, still social distanced. As a former librarian, this makes my heart very happy. Can I please just read now? We want to encourage literacy and reading and writing across all the platforms. And don't forget to read to your students. Here's some benefits to reading out loud to them. All right, now if you need additional resource on anything you've seen, I've attached a few slides here for additional resources. We always want to make sure that what we're teaching is standard-based, data-researched, All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions or concerns or thoughts about anything that you saw today on any of the slides, please, please reach out to me. My email address is there on the screen, A-P-R-I-E-M at M-C-M-C-S dot org. You can follow me on Twitter. And go ahead, and write that link down, bit.ly slash literacy to life. I want to make sure that you get all these great resources. There's the link again for the slides. This will make sure that you get all the links to the presentation today. So go ahead and bit.ly, B 
bit.ly slash literacy to life. And last, you need to make sure you get those slides. You want to click here and you can apply for CEU credits. Go ahead and get those slides so that you can click on this link and get those credits. Thanks for joining me today.